Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. Uh, and I want to reset that one to the shop as well. We're going to have to go with the small headers. Yes. And we need to reset that one as well. Fortunately, one of those headers is a header that we own. Which means that whilst one of them does need to be uh, is leased and so just needs to be returned uh, the other one we bought it at 45 grand so we're going to be able to sell that one back and that means that we're going to be able to get some money and we should have enough money we may not have enough money to go and buy the two corn headers but we should have enough money to go and lease the two corn headers at the very least and then we can use those but we do then also have to drive these back from shop which is a little bit tedious uh, someone suggested I should get the delivery mod because then I can have it delivered anywhere on the map I don't like the delivery mod because it charges you for delivery and I don't know any farm dealership that sells machinery uh, that doesn't deliver it to you on site for free. You're spending thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars, whatever it is, um, to buy the machinery. And they're going to want to try to entice you by... Right, I'll return that one. They're going to want to try to entice you by giving you the free delivery. Right, they're, they're unlikely. Right, wait a minute. It's 40,400. Yes, we do want to do that. So that's giving us 34 grand right there, which means we go here into the corn headers. 19,000 for this one. So I can buy one and I can lease the other one. So I'm going to do that. I will buy one and I will lease a second one because that's what we did previously. There. And now we've got two corn headers. So we've now got corn headers that we can actually use. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the, the whole having the machinery delivered somewhere on the map. That is, that is yeah, I kind of like that. And maybe we will go and do that. It's just the whole charging me for delivery thing. I don't like it. It doesn't feel realistic to me. Right? That That's the one bit that I don't like. Um, for, purely for the fact that, like... I know some dealerships would charge you for delivery, but we've already gone and put in. Like I've bought the just just these two combines right here, right? We have spent well over a quarter of a million dollars with these people in here. Well, euros actually. We're supposed to be on euros, but because um, I'm in the middle of recording my time lapse, I always keep it on. Uh, I just keep it on dollars because my time lapse is on dollars, and that one I I don't like the inconsistency when I forget to change the currency over um, so yeah we've got quarter of a million that we've gone and spent with that dealership yeah they're gonna want to keep the custom now admittedly they're the only one you can see on the map but uh, I live in a small town yeah my town I thought my town had like um, 15,000 people in it it doesn't it's got 8,000 people in it to something similar it might well I think it's eight it's a small town anyway right there's only a few thousands of people here it's got two tractor dealerships it's got two yeah if one of those is offering delivery for free and the other one is not you're going to want to try to get your deliveries for free Especially if they're charging you a percentage of the total machinery, which is what I don't like about the whole vehicle delivery thing. We charge you 5% of the value of the machine. I'm going to go and buy a million pound machine or a half a million pound machine from someone. I expect them to deliver it wherever I tell them to deliver it. I don't care if it's inconvenient for them. You will deliver it where I tell you to or someone else will get the commission out of my half a million pounds. You certainly wouldn't. That's how I would look at it, right? Uh, it, it may be inconvenient, but it's up to you to get that machine to me. It's not up to me to get my machine to me. I'm spending half a million pounds, and I expect it to be delivered to site. I expect it to be delivered with a smile. I expect the delivery to be... I expect 
the impression to be given that the delivery was absolutely no problem whatsoever. It was no inconvenience at all, and it was a pleasure to do it. And I expect a cup of coffee, courtesy of whoever it is that's bringing the stuff in. Right, those are my expectations. I expect a cup of coffee, and I expect it to be delivered. Now, you don't necessarily have to bring the coffee with you when you're delivering the machine, but I still expect that cup of coffee. Certainly, when I go to the dealership, if I wasn't offered a cup... If I've gone and bought a half-million-pound machine and I'm not offered a cup of coffee every time I set through the door, set foot through the door, I'm going to be disappointed. I am going to be thinking of taking my custom elsewhere. I cannot emphasize how important a cup of coffee is to repeat custom, at least from me. All right? That is, that is how ridiculously important coffee is to me. Um, I really love the fact that this combine has stopped and is waiting for that one. I don't know what this dude is doing, though. Really not sure what that's all about. But he is moving. What I don't like is that those corn headers do seem to be quite tight to the ground. Now, there is a mod. I noticed when I was, I was sort of perusing the mods on the Mod Hub earlier. Um, and I did notice there's one where you can alter the height of the header on a combine. And I thought, well, that's actually a pretty cool thing. That, that, that could be quite a useful thing, that could. Um, I don't know how... Uh, I didn't install it. I, did, I haven't tried it out because... I'm always wary of ones that alter gameplay because those tend to be the ones that you get the most trouble with bugs with. Um, and bugs, when I'm recording, do quite frequently interfere with my actual recording. It can cause a game crash which then crashes my recording software and that causes me problems. Um, so I'm always very, very wary of anything that alters gameplay as opposed to a mod that is just added in. That's why I tend to act very cautiously when it comes to mods altering gameplay because i you know I've, I've got my recording to to worry about so yes the idea of being able to manually adjust the header the height of it just so that i could tweak that up a little bit um so that the combine's not sort of riding up on the ground as much as he's going around the field that would be absolutely wonderful and it would probably be a really good thing but i'm not going to risk it just straight out like that without first sort of maybe doing a bit of investigation or testing it somewhere first to see if there's any particular issues that may suddenly come up um sometimes there are sometimes there are not it, it does really depend on how it's behaving on the day and and what the particular mod is like sometimes the game crashes don't cause me any problem i just it like the, the recording software does what it's supposed to do and it automatically stops recording um it doesn't always though sometimes a game crash interferes with the uh recording software and then that does cause an issue and that's that's the sort of thing that i gotta look out for but that's that's my concern not yours all you need to worry about really is whether or not i'm still going to make the videos and yes i am at the moment um we're going to go and get this tractor. And we're going to go and get those two trailers over there. So by selling that corn header, we've leased one and we've bought one. We've now got $14,000 available to us right now. Corn prices. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, baby. Look at that. 1,405 is the highest price we have seen. And we got 1,393 right there. 1,393 right there. Available without any problems at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook you in on here. And I'm going to go straight round here. I'm going to undo that one. And I'm going to also undo the back one. I know that the combine is 75% full. I'm ignoring that for a second. Because I'm racing back over here past our new fields. In and around this way. And I'm going to anchor to a halt under there. And then I'm going to go bing, bong, bang, boom. And there. 777 litres in there. So we're going to grab those 777 litres, which is 7% of our trailer. 
And then we're going to go racing off over this way. I'm going to let those two combines run around the field twice more. Uh, once more, sorry. So that's another two circuits around the field. That's going to give us just a little bit more room on the end. Because we've only got three meter headers on here. We want a little bit more space. So I'm going to unload this bad boy here. He's at 90% at the moment. I'm not going to unload him completely. I'm going to take some grain off just so that he can keep running. And then I'm going to circle back round and I'm going to go and get the other track, uh, other combine. There, yeah, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to go back round to you. Now you're at 90%. And I'm going to empty this one out completely now. Because he's probably going to stop. There he is. Right. You start putting that spout out. And I'll take a little bit off of you right here. Just before you get to the corner there. And then you can go round the corner so that you don't park next to the trailer. I will spin round. And then as you start going up across the field up here. I can then follow you again. This time I'm going to go on a bit further. I'm going to set my... Um, cruise control here it's easier if I can set the cruise control right that's uh, there right 10 set cruise control to 10k and I will cruise along and I will fill up this back trailer and we'll take everything out of the back uh, off of this back combine now as we go on up through the front one he's still got 20% space in the machine up there which is absolutely fine and then as soon as this one here is full uh, empty rather as soon as that combine is empty I'll run forward and we'll go and get there we go right let's go I'm not just gonna sit running alongside you let's go and get some more off of this one and I'll probably do a complete empty as we go down the other side of the field if I just take a little bit into this front trailer here like this there we go a little bit off of there so that's taking you down to about 80% that's fine Back up here so that you don't put anything into my trailers. And I'll let you run along that top end. And then if I sort of follow you along like this. Helper H has a nearly full grain tank. And then I can just run down beside the field down over here. And then once I've emptied that one out, we've also got to change the combine. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to let that one go a second, and I'm going to go to, not you, I'm going to go to this one. Right, helper B is blocked there, and I think that's probably enough room to be turning around over there. So I'm just going to take this one off of here, and he's going to run down this side. Alright, I'm going to put you down here. I'm not going to do straight like the normal hired help or anything like that. I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to turn it round so that we've got that facing in the correct direction. I'm going to bring you down over here. And you are going to run in a straight line up the field there. So then I'm going to go to this one. And we're going to race up to try and meet that combine there. So that I can start emptying that one out before he stops. He's at 96%. I want to keep both these combines running. 98. I'm not going to be able to. He is going to stop before I get to him. There. See? Told you. Um, right, I'd say, well, as he stopped a second, let's go into here and just change that to running up and down. I don't need to do anything different to that. Let's go to you there. Travel on up through. Yeah, put that in the back trailer. Let's move out a little bit so that you do actually put the stuff in the trailer. That would be good. Be helpful. And there we have it. We have our corn harvest underway. I've got my two combines working in the field. I had both of them working together in the field just briefly. Just for the briefest of moments. Poetry in motion, it really was. You're down to 40% right here. Okay, that's enough taken off of that one. So I'll leave that combine there to turn round and I'll run over to this one. I'm very glad I've got two combines working. I can already see the massive benefits to that. It's no longer a matter of us just sitting and waiting for the combine to fill up. Um, sort of trying to while away the time as I do so. We are able to 
What are you doing? You've got all the space in the world and you need a 27 point turn to just turn yourself around and get back going in the other direction. It's a little bit odd. I will confess. A little bit strange. But it's doing what it needs to do, I suppose. As long, as long, as long as he's able to just, you know, continue doing what he needs to do. I'm, I'm happy with that. Are you going slower than 10? I think he is going a bit slower than 10. Let's um, him catch up a little bit. Oh, right. We, we filled up that back trailer there. I was wondering why it was acting a little bit strange. It's because the back trailer is now completely full. Let's go on round over here like this. There. I like this. This, this, this looks good. I have 16,000 litres in this trailer. So these two trailers, we're actually filling up fairly quickly. So there's a, there's a reasonable amount of grain coming off of the field, which is which is a really good thing. Um, I got 2,000 litres in the other combine, so we'll allow that one to turn round now, and then we can follow that one down the field a bit. Take off some more. The... 1399 in it. I'm going to fast forward time for another hour at least. Because that price, look how fast it's going up at the moment. That means we've got a really good potential price coming in. I'm thinking that I'm going to fast forward time until at least 5 o'clock. And we're going to end up getting a very, very good overall price on this field. Let's bring you along there like that. I'll keep it going at the moment. There, one... Wow. <laughs> one four fifty. That is an insane price. I'm I'm gonna go later. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna push this. I'm gonna push this for all we're worth, and uh, we can go to like seven o'clock, and we can still see just fine. So that price there at one four seventy, we may even hit fifteen hundred for corn, which I've never seen before. That's not something I've seen. It's not something I've seen on any of the um like the the charts or records or anything i've looked at previously 1482 is it this is this is looking good this is looking pretty swish now we're on seven o'clock in the evening at the moment we're gonna keep going with this we're gonna keep pushing keep pushing and pushing and pushing until that price stops climbing it stopped climbing at 1487 right let's slow that down we're half past six we're on 1487 at the ranch. Now, admittedly, the ranch is not the closest one to get to. We've got to go right the way through the town and down over to there. But we are selling straight off the field. Every single grain that we produce, we're going to take down there and we're going to sell straight off the field. Because we're not going to get a better price. You know, I'm actually going to just get my little um, bit of paper that I've got. And I'm going to write that price down. Yeah, 1487, highest price we have ever seen for corn. Which is genuinely remarkable, and also even more so remarkable due to the fact that it happened to coincide with the corn harvest. Now, there are those cynical members of the audience amongst you. I know you're there, you know who you are, uh, who may think that perhaps I have tweaked the numbers in the game in order to produce this remarkable coincidence. I can tell you, hand on heart, honestly, I have not done that. And for those of you who've watched the channel for a while, you know that my word is my bond. Uh, if I say I'm going to do something, I will probably forget, right? So not that word being my bond, but if I say I have done something or I haven't done something, then you can be sure that it's happened. Because, you know, saying I'm going to do something... I then simply forget. That's not dishonesty, that's forgetfulness. That's different. But I do value honesty above all else. Right? Honesty is extremely important to me, so I do not tell fibs. Do not tell porky pies. If I had altered the numbers in order to get that to happen, I would admit to it. I haven't. It is just a coincidence. Quite a remarkable one. I'm quite pleased that it's happened. Um... But that is, yeah, it, it is just a coincidence. Right. I'm slowing down and speeding up. 
Unfortunately, when you've got the cruise control, you've got to press and hold the cruise control in order to get the high speed if you've set your cruise control to a lower number. But if you press the button again, it defaults. Like, if I take it off the cruise control, it should slow down for a corner and then go to speed up. It goes to the 10 first. So it'll go to that one first. It slows it down and then it will speed it up because I've pressed and held the button down. So you do get a bit of braking effect first before the, the next bit happens unfortunately right with this um corn price that we've got that does mean that there's a very good chance that we're going to be able to get the two seed drills that i was talking about which means that we're not we're certainly going to be able to get one of them which means that we don't need to worry about doing um well 20,000 and 1,500 for, uh, per 1,000 litres. We should get both of them. There's, there's no reason why we won't get both of them, to be honest. Um, I'll bring you right in on here into the ranch. There we go. little tiny bit fast, perhaps, coming up over that ramp right there, but never mind. And I want to dump you out and dump you out as well. There we go. Two golden trailer loads of corn, or two trailer loads of golden corn, I suppose, would be a more accurate description. Uh, $39,000. That means that we've got enough to buy one of them, and we're up to 45000 We get another such a trailer load like that, we get, uh, 30 grand for a trailer load at 1500 per thousand litres, which means that we will be able to... Let me just bring you in round here. What, what? Why aren't you... Oh, it's because I'm pressing the wrong button. That's cruise control button there right um yeah with an extra thirty-five thousand on top of that we will be able to get both the seed drills that we want to get uh we won't actually be doing our planting until the morning because it's getting fairly late now at half past six so we'll do the combining and then we'll wait well, i suppose we don't need to wait until morning we can just start them working and then we can have uh just leave them working overnight that'll be fine this tractor will pull one, and the Fiat will pull the other, is how we're going to do that. So I can get the Fiat on there, get that one on one of the drills, and I can start that one working in the field immediately, while the combines are still working, and I'm still waiting to get like the rest of the grain. We've got enough power in that Fiat to be able to do the direct drilling. It requires 108 horsepowers. And the Fiat does have 150 horses under its bonnet. So it's it's a bit of a beast of a machine. It looks old. It looks worn out. But it is actually a bit of a beast. It's just quietly sitting there with 150 horses in the bonnet. Which is quite a remarkable thing, really. It, you know, it, it's, um, it's an unsung hero, that Fiat. And it's going to be even more of an unsung hero because it's... Well, at the moment, we've got it hooked up to the plough over there. So, um... Just wondering if we want to change that round. But no, we won't change it. We we may not get the ploughing done before we get the rest of this done. I'll go and unload these two combines a minute. And then maybe we've got time to do a little bit of... Um, other work. So I'll go up to this combine first and we'll follow this one all the way down the field unloading as we go and then I'll go to the other one and I'll just park the trailer underneath the combine so we can spin back over to the Fiat and potentially possibly get another big chunk of the fertilizer, the plowing done, sorry not fertilizing so that, oop that one uh, so that we've then got the other field over there. If, if we can have that one finished, that would be great, because then we can plant that one up as well. And it would be an interesting little test with the AI vehicle extension as to whether it can get round that tiny field with the walls being where they are, uh, or whether we're going to just sort of need to help it around the outside edge. I reckon the second round, it'd probably be alright. The fact that it's a trailed machine is going to be a bit more of a challenge for it, but I still think it's going to be able to do it. I still think it's going to be alright with uh, working its way through it. Right, that corn is now empty. We've got 5,000 litres in there. I'm going to go and put this one with the second trailer being the bit that takes the grain off of that combine over there. 
And, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to park it underneath the spout and leave it. So I'll bring you right in here and park you right there like that. And simply leave you there. Right, so if you're going to do that, we will go over to you and lower you down. I think I didn't have it on allow create fields. Uh, no, I did have it on allow create fields. So we will put that back in and carry on. We'll keep an eye on the combines in the top left-hand corner. Which is the vehicle inspection mod. It's not glance. It's called vehicle inspection. And it is one that is available on the um, mod hub. Um, I like it. There, there are others that give you more information, more data, and some people prefer those as to, uh, you know, as opposed to this one. For me personally, I think that one is absolutely fine. I don't need masses of data being streamed past me all the time. Um, I find it a bit off-putting sometimes. So I, I have seen some mods where there's just like reams of stuff there that you can go and look at, and you can have a stream of data that is taking up the full. Uh, height of the screen on the left or right hand side. I don't like that. I, I don't need that kind of information constantly spamming at me all the time. Um, that information is in menus if I want to go and find it, but I don't personally feel the need to be having all of that there. It, it doesn't sort of benefit me. It doesn't enhance my gameplay experience. Let me just bring you back over here, which is why I really like this... Um, vehicle inspection mod right it, it just tells me what they've got on board it's got i've got the percentages there i can see both the combines they're working i can see how fast they're moving so i can see whether or not they're moving at all uh what they are and i can see uh it says corn 43 percent and corn 23 percent that's that's all i need i don't need anything more than that that tells me that they're working away in the fields and I've, I've got everything that I need to know. And then, obviously, we've got the one that I'm sitting in. Um, don't really need that one at all, to be honest. Uh, the, I know that that one's on, you know, it's on the list, but I, I don't actually need that. It's all it's doing is just telling me all vehicles that are running. Um... I think you can have them so that there's a little bit like I've got that. It well, it's saying H for hired help, and then 330. So that's the Nova 330 that is running right there. So it keeps it very, very limited on the data that tells you about exactly what's identifying what machine is there. But again, you're the one running the farm. It's unlikely that you're going to really need to know very much more than that because it tells you you already know what vehicles you've got running on your farm, so you don't need help identifying anything extra on your farm other than just that little bit right there 330 i know that i've got three uh, com, you know the nova 330s so the fact that it's it, did, there's no need for anything more than just 330 written there on the screen that's that's all we really need for that bit right i'll get to the end of the run right here i'm actually going to lift it and turn it and then we're going to jump over to the combines and see about emptying out because one of those combines, I think, is going to be fine with heading off to another field. So you can keep going on up there at 50%. You've got 72%. You're going to get down... How you... Oh, it's because you carried on. Well, that one was still emptying out. This combine here... I'm going to let that one turn round and do a little tiny bit. No, I'm not actually. I'm just going to stop that one. Yeah. I think we've relived enough glory days just for a moment. We're going to take a breather. We're going to have a little bite to eat. And then we can get back to it nice and refreshed and relive a few more glory days. There should be some names coming up right now that you can have a look at. It's names of people who are in the Great Book of Names, people who have supported this channel. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.